In this video, we will begin on the enthalpy and Hess's law topic, starting with energy transformations and the enthalpy of formation. If we recall from previous lessons, it appears counterintuitive, but bond breaking absorbs energy and bond forming produces energy. We call reactions which absorb energy endothermic reactions and reactions which release energy exothermic reactions. The law of conservation of energy is the law that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed. Again, in our previous lesson, I discussed how the energy which was absorbed by a system in an endothermic reaction did not cause it to heat up, and the reason for that was because of the law of conservation of energy, in that the energy can be changed into different forms. An example is given here where the energy which is absorbed by the surroundings could be in any of the three forms, and that which is produced could similarly be of any of these three forms. Here are some examples of energy transformations in some common reactions. Bond energy is a term which refers to the amount of energy that's required to break a bond. In the case of a polyatomic molecule, there are multiple bonds that exist. An example of this is CH4 which has four CH bonds. What this means is that if one CH bond has an energy of 415.5 kilojoules per mole, then one mole of CH4 would require 415 times 4 equals to 1,662 kilojoules to break all of its bonds. Now forming bonds is the opposite of breaking bonds. In the previous example we looked at, we calculated that CH4 required 1,662 kilojoules to break all of its bonds. Since forming bonds is the exact opposite, and we know that forming bonds releases energy rather than absorbing it, we can calculate how much energy is released by CH4, and it will be the exact opposite, so the enthalpy of formation is going to be a negative 1,662 kilojoules per mole. It is important to note that some substances do not release energy when formed. The delta H of formation for substances in the elementary form is going to be equal to zero. Gases such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and chlorine all have an enthalpy change value of zero. Now we can calculate the enthalpy change using this formula delta H of the reaction equals to N, which is the number of moles, times the delta H of formation of the products minus the number of moles of the reactants times the delta H of formation of the reactants. Now the enthalpy of formation for products is going to be equal to the energy that's produced when forming bonds. And the negative of this delta H of formation of the reactants is going to be the energy that's absorbed when breaking bonds. Here is an example of an enthalpy of formation calculation. Notice that both carbon and oxygen are in the elementary forms. Previously, we established that breaking and forming of these elementary forms have an enthalpy change of zero. So if the delta H is negative 222 kilojoules, then all of it must come from the formation of CO, carbon monoxide. By our stoichiometric ratio, we know that for two moles of carbon monoxide that's produced, it is going to have a delta H change equal to minus 222 divided by 2, and that is going to equal minus 111 kilojoules per mole. Now that we have calculated for CO, and we know that each mole produces 111 kilojoules, we can subtract 222 from negative 564 and divide the total by 2, hence the stoichiometric ratio, to calculate the enthalpy change of CO2, which would ultimately be minus 393 kilojoules per mole.